I've been using Go for the last eight years probably, and it's my go-to language for most of the projects nowadays. But we can all agree that Go code can be verbose sometimes, and it may attract some people, like me for example, but it's also quite often a hot topic for discussion, especially when it comes to error handling, when the big portion of your code base could be dedicated to error checks purely. What's beautiful though about error handling in Go is that errors are values, and they can be passed around, modified, because as Rob Pike said, values can be programmed, and since errors are values, errors can be programmed too. Now let's go to our editor and quickly summarize all of that. So yeah, I just want to quickly show how it all works. So let's open our go file, um, and then let's see an example of opening a file. So we can do f. Um, sorry, os.open, right, then a file name. As we can already see, error is simply a return value. And theoretically, it could be multiple errors return, though it's considered to be a bad practice. And as a user, what I should do is simply check if error is not equal new. And here we can process our error, right? So let's just use block here. And yeah, this part is quite verbose, right? So you always see this in, in the Go code. You do error equal, then if error not equal new, it could be simplified a little bit and be in a single line if, for example, Let's say we are closing the file, right? So we can do this if error equal file get close, right? And do after that directly in the same line and also process this error. So fatal error. So as you can see, it's quite easy and even boring, right? The errors are simply values. They can be returned by functions, can be even passed to other functions. And yeah, that's it. Um, inside, error is basically an interface type, so it's also quite easy to define your own errors. So you can do, let's say, type my error, and errors can have some context, so maybe at least an error message. So now on this type, you need to implement the error function, so you can do func do run my error. And an error that returns a string. So we must have this one. We return e.s. And then, yeah, we can have some kind of construction. Let's say new error that returns now error type. And we can return the pointer to our my error struct. So, yeah, using this new error function, you basically can create a instance of our custom error, right? And then, oh, sorry, we need to pass the actually error message here and yeah, kind of do s equal s. And because we can create these custom error types in Go as we did here, it's also quite handy to have them because you can check what exactly happened using the internal errors package, for example. So we can do, so let's say we already know that error happened here, but we can also check like using switch or using if like let's say if errors is and then error and for example with files it could be i believe file system yeah error not exists for example right and maybe handle this error differently here right so maybe maybe log for example right um errors undefined right so we need to import that right and that's basically it about errors in Go. And so not everything, but just the basics. You can go and read these great articles like Errors are Values. I'll leave the links in the description. But as you already noticed from the title of this video, we are going to talk about Zeek here as well, and specifically about its error handling. And heads up, I'm quite new to Zeek. Um, yes, I wrote a few that simple programs, but I'm still learning. I found some similarities between Zeek and Go. Because both languages have adopted this design philosophy of simplicity to remove the language out of the way and let you be productive quite quickly. Zeek, however, stays true to its no hidden control flow concept and requires a programmer to manage memory allocations manually. And I've been always programming in garbage collected languages and kind of used to this fact that allocations are happening behind the scenes automatically and memory allocations can fail too. So that's our segue into error handling in Zeek. So let's go back to our editor and now create the main.zeek file. All right, let's first create some 
skeleton pod, so we will need standard libraries, so we can do import std. Then we can obviously create our main function. I will explain this a bit later. But let's start with some function which we'll play. And the function will do kind of get the arguments from our command line so we can get and the count of them. So get arcs count, for example. So in Zeek, as we need to allocate memory, there's this thing called, called allocators that you usually pass around. So std mem allocator. So now let's talk a little bit about errors. Zeek as code treats errors as values, though it does it through the specific enum that can be created implicitly. And when I say implicitly, that's where things get a little bit interesting. So usually our get arcs count would return u size. It's a specific type that you kind of return when you use dot len uh, to get lens of an array. Let's just, yeah, try some code. So um, we can get the arcs using the I think it's std process dot arcs alloc. So you need allocator here as well. So we pass our allocator here. Now it's interesting that if you look at this arcs alloc function, it may return an error. And uh, that's specified through this exclamation mark, which is really interesting, right? That's how you indicate that a function can return an error through the exclamation mark. So we add exclamation mark here and the colors of this function will know that this function may return an error. And we can take the explicit approach or implicit one. Similar to Go, in Zeek, all errors have to be handled. And as we already know, that arcs log can return an error because I can see the exclamation mark here. We need to process that. One way would be to use try here. What try will do is it will propagate the error of the call stack. So if error happens here, it will re return the error in this function. So here. And basically, this line is the equivalent of if error not equal nil in Go, return error, right? So instead of doing three or four lines in Go, that would be a single line in Zeek here. Obviously, kind of we don't lock here. Uh, I'll show you later how to do that. So it can return error, error here. And if there is no error, the code will proceed further. We can check maybe, let's say, args.len less than two. And here it's really interesting. We can return an implicit error with a name. So we can do error and let's say define the error name. And we can do it, let's say, uh, empty arcs. Right? Otherwise, uh, there is no error, so we can return arcs.len. So to summarize, here's our simple function that may return an error. Otherwise, it returns the u size type. And it can return errors in these two places, right? So here and here. Now let's see how we would use this function, or I mean, how we would call this function. So we can also, um, let's do arcs. Actually, before that, we need allocators. So we can do, in Zeek there are many allocators and there are defined ones or predefined ones. So we can use a general purpose allocator from std heap general purpose allocator, right? So config will keep empty like that. Then we can define our allocator as gb.allocator. So we have it. We don't worry about uh, delegating at the moment. And we call our function, right? So we get args count equal. So pass our allocator here. Now, the same applies to our main function. As you can see, it's void, but it's without exclamation mark. So if we kind of okay for void to fail, we can add exclamation mark, or we can make void kind of clean and then handle our errors. So we can do the same here, right? We can also do, we, can, we cannot use try because it will propagate the error of the call stack and void uh, has no exclamation mark, but we can catch the error. And that's what I want to show here. And to do that, right after the calling the function, we can do catch, and then error. And here we can log the error or process it. So we can do std right, debug print. And let's say, do it up. 
invalid input and uh, right we can also pass the error that would be error here as I believe cool and then we can simply return from our main otherwise if all good we can do the same std debug print and then maybe got arcs we can print the count of arcs that we got right and also pass now the arcs count right all right obviously we need a semicolon here cool so here's the one way of handling the errors in your sketch without panicking without failing um, in case of error we simply log it and quit from the quit from the function otherwise we print the amount of arcs so let's put it into a test so you can do zig run main dot zig and then maybe a few arcs so let's say one two i should print um and actually usually so why i did two here it's because usually we omit the first one so you can do the actual arcs here right and then come back here so we got two arcs if there are none we print the error, right? And we also print which specifically error. Obviously, it's hard to fail on memory allocation, but technically it could happen. And I'll show how to maybe omit this in the future. But cool, that's one way. Now, this catch keyword can be nicely paired with fallback returns. And I'll show it here. So we can also do the same. So args count equal get args count allocator. And we can do catch zero so the zero would be a default value assigned to arcs count variable if get arcs count fails so we can come down to this code and you see just much shorter obviously we don't handle the error here or we don't log it but sometimes it's helpful when you don't need to process the error itself or maybe it's locked already inside you just want to proceed and maybe have some fallback value so just confirm that it works as previously so right here should show zero so you see it's a little bit different before we would fail now it just shows zero and otherwise yeah it prints the count of arguments there is also something in between of these two as you can see here we can catch the error and log it and return so we cannot assign the kind of fallback value to arcs count and here we just kind of use fallback but we Kind of don't log anything at all. Uh, for that, we can use the thing called named blocks. So we can do again similar thing. Also do catch and this construct. So be okay. Then we open the block, and then here we can you know process the error. So it's kind of the proper block. We can do everything we want here. Now at the end, once we're done, we can do break. And I think it's this construct be okay, and then maybe return zero. And we can then comment this out and test if it still works, right? Cool. So it's kind of the same. We didn't do any processing here, but we got the fallback value zero. So another kind of quite handy construct here. And another way to handle errors in Zeek it's to use if, else, and catch. Um, that's kind of the ultimate way. You can handle both cases and also check for error types. So again, we can open the get arcs count, our allocator, and then do the, let's see, arcs count, that's the variable if there is no error and we can do else so else error and then switch error so we can also check the error type here if everything goes well we can do this thing here right so because we have it here defined and now because it's a switch we can do just let's say we are worrying about our empty arc I'm sure why there is no auto condition anyway we can do then else I believe like that and then in case of empty arcs we can print something maybe as we did here right 
Otherwise, maybe you can print different message, like unexpected error. Rate. We already print inside success block, so we can remove this part. All right, let's test this. So empty input. Right, we print our error, and otherwise we still print the correct amount of arguments. Remember I mentioned that in Zeek, as well as Go, you have to handle all the errors. But sometimes, maybe you're writing some scripts, or maybe build scripts, where you don't want to make it really verbose, you just want to you know, kind of exit immediately or panic. There's this catch unreachable construct as well in Zeek, so... And it'll be very similar to what we did with catch zero, so let me copy it from here. The difference is that it will be just catch unreachable. Catch unreachable, and this part will be the same, right? And so if error happens here, it will panic. Let's do that. Right, as you can see, it panics. Uh, we got the empty arcs error. Otherwise, you know, it will just work as is. So quite short, um, but obviously without any error handling here. And so we explore a few ways of how to handle errors in Zeek. We, I think this one, try keyword is really powerful, single one liner, we propagate the up the call stack. Uh, there's also catch, obviously, if else, switch. So quite nice, right? Though the errors in Zeek, they don't handle or they don't pass any context or behavior as we will see in Go. There was actually an open issue in Zeek to implement something like that to return error with some kind of um, additional information, for example, could be helpful when we yeah, do some parsing, maybe, or JSON encoding. But it was closed, and uh, you can still go and implement your own kind of generic result type, as you would have it in Rust, right, when, where you have the maybe the return value and then optional errors. But if we switch back to our Go file, that's actually really nice thing in Go. Uh, for example, I'm not sure what error not exists, but path not found, or something like path error. Right, so let's go to this definition, right? So, for example, path error is defined with some context inside of it. So there is an operation, path, and error. And, yeah, it's really helpful to check, kind of, when you get an error, maybe what path, what operation. So, yeah, in Go it's already here and it's quite handy. Obviously, there are different ways for handling errors in different programming languages, but I personally love how it's done in Go in Zeek, and that's why I wanted to make this video, especially comparing to other languages um, where you have exceptions, let's say. On one hand, Zeek presents more feature-rich, powerful, and concise way for handling errors. On the other hand, there is Go, which is more straightforward, but has some rich contextual errors, and yeah, the code could be more verbose, but really easy to grasp, right? Cool. Let me know in the comments below what you think about error handling in these two programming languages, and till next time. Bye!